In the year 1875, the rugged northeast corner of India called Assam was still virtually unreachable to outsiders. Yet for centuries, neighboring kingdoms attempted to conquer its warring tribes. Just to the west, India, colonized by the British, threatened the remote northeast. In fear and self-defense, the region's fiercest warriors, called the Naga, fought back by attacking the British tea plantations. Their enemies had much to fear from the Naga, many of whom were headhunters. The bravest warriors displayed many skulls to their merit. Human heads were considered by many Naga to contain the soul and were also associated with fertility. It was into this land of warfare that American Baptist missionary, the Reverend E.W. Clark, arrived in 1876. While the ancient religions of Hinduism and Buddhism prevailed in the surrounding region, each Naga tribe had its own unique religious belief. Many were animists, believing that human life is governed by supernatural beings or souls. I am missionary Taku Long Kumar, born and raised in Nagaland and whose family were early Naga Christians, remembers what it was like growing up there. He worshipped all the big trees and big rocks and all those and sacrificed eggs, chickens and dog and all those. Uh, that's the life of the people that he were always afraid of the spirit. To these spirit worshippers, there was not one god, but many gods. Not one ultimate authority, but many who wielded power through magic and witchcraft. Instead of faith in an all-loving god, fear of invisible forces and senseless suffering reigned. The Clarks were not the first missionaries to proclaim the gospel among the Naga in Nagaland. Nearly 40 years earlier, Reverend Miles Bronson, another American Baptist missionary, introduced Christianity in the hill country. He talked about the gospel and prepared a spelling book and a catechism in the Naga language. However, he returned to the United States after only a few months due to illness and the death of his sister. Early missionary work was difficult. By 1850, there were only 50 Christians from the state of Assam. The baptism of 40 people from the Garo tribe in 1868 almost doubled the number of new Christians in the region. Yet the explosive growth of Christianity would not have come were it not for the missionary efforts of the Assamese people themselves. Once again, Taku Long Kumar. The worship, the idols and festivals, those, the give up those and change their life. And you know, it's very much like in Psalm 67, God face shine upon them. They were filled with joy. They experienced the joy. When they get together, they were talking about God, the love of God, about Jesus that loves them, to provide their needs. Godhula Brown, one of the early Assamese evangelists, set out on a dangerous journey to remote Naga villages to share the gospel. After first encountering hostility, he then won their trust and returned to Assam, accompanied by nine men who were then baptized by Reverend Clark. With those early converts began one of the truly great stories of the global missionary movement. For 30 years, the Clarks worked in this faraway land before completing their service as missionaries and returning to the United States. Dr. Clark could not have known the legacy he, other American Baptist missionaries, and the early Assamese Christians would leave. In just 175 years, this corner of Asia has gone from zero believers to a thriving Christian land, which today is home to more than 7,800 churches and over one million members. Today, one of those regions, Nagaland, is referred to as the largest Baptist state in the world, with 75% of its population professing to be Baptist Christians. The impact of the gospel to the Naga people is tremendous. The gospel has uh, emancipated them towards a new worldview where the world is a possibility with challenges and hopes. Today, the vibrant Christian movement in Northeast India is sending missionaries of its own into India, Asia, Africa, and other parts of the world. 
the leaders of the Council of Baptist Churches in Northeast India expresses gratitude for the commitment of American Baptists 176 years ago and for our ongoing support today. When you see the need of the mission in the out in the field, the, the population, the unriched people, what we are doing is only a fraction, but economically we are weak. We need a partnership together and see the area where we can do our part. That's why we need uh, the American Baptist churches to cooperate with us. And they invite the churches to continue to walk with them, spreading the good news together, helping more people come to Christ, grow in Christ, and change their world with Christ. Thank you for your gifts that support this evangelistic movement and so many others around the world. Making ends meet is a daily struggle for mothers living in poverty in Dimapur, Northeast India. In their homes on the railroad track, women sell their bodies to neighbors and relatives to buy enough rice for the day or to pay tuition for a week. Trapped in a way of life that was handed down from mother to daughter, these women are society's forgotten. They have little hope of breaking free. Today, many women who once were without hope are finding a new life through the ministry of the Miklot Center. Located just blocks from the railroad tracks, Miklot offers prayer, encouragement, and job training. It makes microcredit loans to help start businesses. It is an important ministry of the Nagaland Baptist Church Council Women's Department. Gorma, a former drug trafficker and prostitute learned of God's love at the Miklot Center. This woman got married at the age of 15 to a drug addict. And then uh, she has to go around begging for money, not to feed herself, but to meet the drug of the husband. And one day it seems the husband told her, get ready, I'm going to take you out. So she was so happy because they have been married, but they never get to go out together time the husband said, uh, the place where I'm taking, people are going to touch you, you know, men are going to touch you. She was so scared of the husband, so she said, okay, and she went. It seems the husband took her to a bar. The next morning, she found herself lying naked next to a stranger, and she was so scared to go home. That's how she was sold away by her own husband. That's how she was introduced into the trade. She started prostituting, she started drugs, she started alcohol, and then she became a pimp, a supplier of women, she became a drug dealer, and the most popular uh, women out in the streets. God, in his best time, brought her to Miklat, introduced her to Miklat, and she was broken, but she just didn't want to admit. No? We talked, and then she just broke down, and since that day, she is a different person, reaching out to her friends, uh, pulling people, uh, uh, to God. They will even tell us today, if people like her can change, why not we? She is a blessing to us, yeah. At the Miklot Center, Gorma and others like her share their stories of hope, bringing many to a true belief in the Lord and tools to start a new life. The women of the Nagaland Baptist Church Council Thank American Baptist women for paving the way for ministries like the Miklot Center. The World Mission Offering provides critical financial support to the Miklot Center through grants to International Ministries Partner, the Council of Baptist Churches of Northeast India. Thank you for your prayers and your gifts to the World Mission Offering. You are supporting more than 200 Christian partners in over 70 countries around the world, 24 hours a day, 365 days a year.
You make it possible for God to enter people's hearts so they can come to Christ, grow in Christ, and change their worlds with Christ. The laughter of children rings throughout this small campus, yet the classrooms are silent. At the Deaf Biblical Ministry in Dimapur in Northeast India, 60 hearing impaired children are learning about the love of Christ through the study of American Sign Language. Most of these children came from Christian families, but they never received the gift of the gospel because they couldn't hear. In 1987, Reverend Yanger Walling and his wife, both lifelong Baptists, heard the Lord's call to serve hearing impaired children and founded the Deaf Biblical Ministry as a private Christian school. Today, it is funded by the Indian government and has been recognized as best institute by the President of India. The children, ages five to 25, learn self-sufficiency, independence, and work skills Agatu is 25 now, and he started school at age 11. My name is Agatu, and I'm 25 years old. I started here in the year 2000. Before that, I did nothing. I was bored. I watched TV and sat around. And I had no friends. I was alone. When I came to this school, I learned a lot of things. I learned how to sign, and I began to understand what other people are saying. It improved a lot in my life. Now I can ask questions and also answer and understand. I am thinking and praying to God now. Thank you so much. The Deaf Biblical Ministry is one example of the tremendous influence that local Baptists and American Baptist missionaries have made on educational, health, and social services in Northeast India. During the past 175 years, Baptists founded numerous hospitals, schools, and social service agencies, including the Deaf Biblical Ministry in communities all over Northeast India. Today, the government of India celebrates the contributions of these ministries, and in fact, provides either partial or full ongoing support to continue their vital services. Thank you for your prayers and your gifts to the World Mission Offering. You are supporting more than 200 Christian partners in over 70 countries around the world, 24 hours a day, 365 days a year. You make it possible for God to enter people's hearts so they can come to Christ, grow in Christ, and change their worlds with Christ. Welcome to this pre-recorded webinar from American Baptist International Ministries. I am Manuel Hernandez, Vice President of the International Ministries Board of Directors. I am here today to give you the report on how the gifts given by churches and individuals in 2010 are being used by International Ministries in Global Mission. First. I'd like to thank you for your prayers and for your contributions to the World Mission Offering. The World Mission Offering is International Ministry's largest single source of resources to support ministries around the world. The World Mission Offering provides support for all of IM's personnel ministering around the world and for IM's global Christian partners. In 2010, Churches and individuals in the United States and Puerto Rico 
gave a total of more than three million dollars to support the work of the Lord through the World Mission Offering. The largest portion, two million five hundred seventy thousand dollars, was used to support more than one hundred IN missionaries serving in countries around the world. The vital combination of WMO giving plus giving to IM for the personalized support of missionaries covers IM's total annual missionary costs of $6.8 million. Your missionaries are able to carry on the work of the Lord thanks to you, and they are encouraged through your prayers and generous support of them through the World Mission Offering. The remaining $470,000 is being used this year to provide support for IM's global Christian partners and programs, including schools, seminaries, and colleges, health clinics, agricultural projects, peace initiatives, and anti-human trafficking programs. IM partners, thank you for remembering the poor, the sick, the homeless, and the heartbroken through your gifts to WMO. Take a look at three of the ministries in which your contributions are working right now to help people come to Christ, grow in Christ, and change the world with Christ. Watching satellite TV is a popular pastime in the Middle East and North Africa. IN's partner, SAT-7, is a Christian satellite television by and for the people of the Middle East and North Africa. IM is a founding partner in this ministry that started in 1997. SAT-7 reaches people from large cities to remote areas some viewers live in Bedouin tents using gas generators or car batteries to power their TVs and receivers. The broadcasts provide instruction and encouragement to followers of Christ and vital information for those who want to find out more about the teachings of Jesus and his followers. Through the World Mission Offering, you provided $14,000 for the work of the Lord through Christian TV in the Middle East. The Amigos Project is a Christian ministry begun in 2006 to help English-speaking Baptist congregations in the United Kingdom reach out to the Portuguese-speaking community of migrant workers. The migrants come to towns in the UK seeking work, yet they suffer from isolation and loneliness. They are strangers in a strange culture without language proficiency so they can't read, write, or communicate with others. For many of these strangers, the Amigos Project and the community it fosters are the only bridge of survival and adjustment into British society and culture. Amigos, meaning friends, was begun with the help of Jorge and Hermelinda Damaseno, International Ministries missionaries who previously served in Albania. The Amigos Project provides a safe environment in which these newcomers are welcomed into the Christian community. Today, Amigos is active in eight British towns, encouraging families to gather together for mutual support and classes in English as a second language, and have Bible study groups which have become the core of Portuguese-speaking congregations. There are many occasions where the English and Portuguese congregations gather for combined worship. These have included baptismal services, 
where both English and Portuguese candidates have proclaimed their decisions to be followers of Jesus Christ. Through the World Mission Offering, you provided $18,000 for the work of the Lord through Amigos. Hope Unlimited for Children, an IM partner ministry in Brazil, was founded in 1991 by the Reverend Jack Smith and his son Philip to rescue thousands of vulnerable street children who were considered a public nuisance and were being killed by gunmen hired by local business leaders. The ministry is now operated by IM missionaries Philip and Corinne Garrison Smith. Hope currently cares for 500 children at three locations and serves hundreds of graduates through outreach programs. In the 20 years since Hope was founded, nearly 1,000 children have graduated. 75% of the graduates are living stable lives, enjoy meaningful employment, and are active in local churches. Through your gifts to the World Mission Offering, you provided $5,000 for the work of the Lord through Hope Unlimited and for the ministry of the Smiths. SAT-7, the Amigos Project, and Hope Unlimited are three examples out of many that are supported by your contributions to the World Mission Offering. Through your gifts to the World Mission Offering, you help people in need of the love of Christ in 70 countries worldwide. Your gifts help people come to Christ, grow in Christ, and change their worlds with Christ 24-7, 365 days a year. Through WMO, you are a missionary bringing God's kingdom to the world. My name is Nayana Gonçalves Reis. Uh, the city that I live in in Brazil is Campinas. It's a city near Sao Paulo. Nayana grew up poor and often homeless, but with two loving parents. At age 11, Nayana's world fell apart when her father died of AIDS and her mother died suddenly soon after. Now orphaned, Nayana and her brother Tayan and sister Tatiana were split up. She went to live at an aunt's house in the slums where she slept on a hard board in the back room. When it rained, water trickled through a hole in the tin roof, creating a bed of mud. Worst of all, she had lost touch with the very people she loved the most, Tyann and Tatiana. And then my brother went away, and then he never came back again, and I was by myself. And then I was working for a couple of families that was in the neighborhood, and I just had to you know, work and bring money to the family. When Nayana could take no more, she fled from her abusive aunt and sought out a city social worker who had good news. A program called Hope Unlimited had just opened a new home for girls, and to her great joy, her brother Tyann was already at the boys' home. Four years later, her sister Tatiana found her way there. That's how God reunited the family and saved all three children. Hope Unlimited is a home, school, and job training facility for Brazil's most desperate street kids. It is a ministry run by IM missionary couple Corinne Garrison and Philip Smith, who founded it with his father 20 years ago. Diana first learned of the Lord on her very first day at Hope Unlimited from an unlikely source, another child who had seen and suffered so much, a little girl named Katya. I was going to the, the house and I was a bit lost because the, the house was big. And she came into me and she said, oh, there's a new girl. And then she came over and then she just reached her hand and she said, be welcome in the name of Jesus. And then I, I hugged her hand and said, for you too. And then I, I was wondering why she was talking to me, like, be welcome in the name of Jesus. That was, was weird for me. Like, I never heard anybody saying that. And that made me ask her questions about Jesus and get to know him. And that was 
we are in the same time, but that was actually very amazing. Little Katya reached out to Nyana in a gesture of Christ's love. It was a moment Nyana will never forget and made her want to know more about this Jesus person. I'm Corinne Garrison Smith and I work with my husband and my two children, Mark and Isabella, with street kids in Brazil. If we have broken the chain of generational poverty, then we know that God will say, well done, my good and faithful servant. Soon after Nyana arrived at Hope Unlimited, Corinne and Phil introduced her to the Bible. Over the years at Hope Unlimited, Nyana took Jesus into her heart. She herself began telling Bible stories and reached out to the newer residents of Hope Unlimited. Today, Nyana is a college graduate, a young adult leader at Hope Unlimited, and a committed worker for the Lord. I realized that my life could, you know, could help other kids not only in Brazil but you know all over the world who suffer who from abuse. So I see my, myself from I don't know five or ten years from now with my family and not just take having my family but showing them how important it is to be honest, how important it is to be loved and how important it is to believe in, in God deeply. All of International Ministries missionaries seek to make disciples of Christ as they work in their holistic ministry areas. More than 40% of these missionaries serve in parts of the world where most of the people have never heard the good news. When we talk about the Bible and our faith and when we put that faith into action by reaching out to someone in need, we are sharing the good news and inviting others to become followers of Jesus. Evangelism is simply letting people know how much God loves us and how that love of God can transform not only us, but the whole world. Evangelism to me is living authentically like Jesus did. So that would mean to go help the poor, to help the sick, or um, just showing that you really care about what Jesus did. Evangelism is the sharing of the message that Jesus left here for us and the multiplication of the salvation. Thank you for your prayers and your gifts to the World Mission Offering. Your gifts support nearly 100 IM missionaries and 200 Christian partners globally. You make it possible for God to enter people's hearts so they can come to Christ, grow in Christ, and change their worlds with Christ. Muito obrigada.